Who would y'all have as one winner, one loser of free agency so far? We'll start off with the losers. <laughs> uh, I don't want to lose this phrase. I don't want to say the Lakers right off the bat, but I mean, I mean you- <laughs> yeah, they're the lo- one of the losers from uh, free agency. I mean, like you said, Bron was going to take a discount to bring somebody on, and he talked to Clay, tried to get that whole thing settled, and he still chose the Mavericks. So that that kind of just shows this thing is not where it used to be. I mean, even you can have LeBron recruiting you and you're picking going to Dallas over being in L.A. I mean, no wonder LeBron took the the full max that he could. He's like, at this point, we're not going to get any of the players that we want. Like, I don't even know if DeMar is still in the picture for them anymore, but he'd have to take a discount to come to L.A. And we already know he's not. He's about his bread. So, um I don't think have they made any moves in free agency? Not one yet. No, sir. Only thing is D Lo opted back in. Oh, so they're like the, the Cowboys but, right now. Not really yeah. doing much in free agency. So uh. it's, it's, it, they they they're losers for now. I think there are still trades yeah. they can make to become better, right? Is yeah, I think I think there's still things they can do and um I think taking a very patient approach. Is all those picks burning a hole in their pocket? They know those picks are of no use to them, really. You can't you can't you can't plan for the future and play for the present at the same time. It doesn't work. So, and I think Blinka, you know, based on some of these press conferences he's had, is really big on talking about the future and talking about the player development program and all this stuff. And, you know, you have LeBron James on a one plus one deal. All right. You should try to maximize this window now because you're not going to be very good when he goes. Um, I just, there's just no reason for me to believe you're going to be a very good team when he goes. And if you, and if you think you're going to be, you're going to have to pair Anthony Davis with a formidable all-star level player to even have a chance to compete in that Western Conference with Shea, who's going nowhere. OKC who's going nowhere. They're, you know what I mean? Like, they're going to be here for the next 10 years, man. They're going nowhere. And then you've got um, the Denver, who's going to be around, always be a threat. Minnesota. Man, you got to go get him another guy to go play with post-LeBron. And look, that's a different story for a different day. But – what you need to do is mix, maximize, maximize this window and try to win a championship in this window here with LeBron because this is it as far as I'm concerned. You have, this, is your, this is your opportunity. You could be looking at the next 10 years, five years, six years, however many years of, you know, really just mediocre basketball, right? Because that's what we're looking at with the Lakers. It's just, re, it's just reality, right? So um, you, you, you do everything you can. You push all the chips to the table. You make the trade. You make the big movie things that push you over the top. Uh, Lloyd Markkinen, I know Trey Young. I think Trey Young is available. I think for the right price, he could be had. I know they don't believe in a three-star model in this, you know, new CBA. That's fine, right? I understand that. But then go all in on the wings, right? Go to the, go hey, to the Nets. Ron and AD believe in it, though, because they ask for that third star. Yeah. I, I think it's it's really – I think it's a good move for them. Like, you push all those chips to the middle of the table. That's it. That's what you have to do. You have to do that. So – I I really believe that that's the way you you have to approach it. If you're if you're Lakers, it's an all in mentality, and I don't know if Demar puts you over the top. I don't know about all that, but I think that a Kyle Kuzma, in addition to someone else, you know, I, I would like that. Like just athletic wings who can come help you and make, add some shooting to the team that can help you. And and, and you're gonna trade D'Angelo Russell. You got to figure out point guard too. And LeBron plays point guard in his older age. Who knows? But um, there are still moves for them to be made. They still are. And then some of the names, Cam Johnson, Dorian Finney-Smith, guys like that, um, those wings that can really help you. Or you go in on Laurie Markkinen, maybe. Maybe you, maybe you make that move. It would be interesting. Um, but they got to do something. They can't sit here and do nothing, and they got to go all in on this window. Yeah, the other thing, too, Miles, they brought back Max Christie. That, that's well, all they've done. Right that's all they've done like so it. far in free agency. I love that they kept him because it was actually a conversation that they might lose him. So. They did at least that right. I think Dalton Connect's gonna have a good impact on uh this year from off the rip. He's not going to the G League. Uh, no. Dalton is not going to G League. He's ready right now to play and make an impact. Like you said, you gotta figure out what they're gonna do, try to get some wings, try to do something. It's it's literally kind of the same thing the last two, three years. It's like y'all just trying to get JV pieces at this point to just see who fits around. Me personally, I'm trading for Trey Young. If I were them, I'm going all in on a three-star model. I'm trading for Trey Young. I think Trey Young is the perfect running mate for LeBron and AD. The shooting he provides, you're shooting from the, one of the biggest problems you have. 
You add that shooting, which is an elite level shooter. I know he's not a great defender necessarily, but you have good defenders around him per se. I don't think you have to give up nearly as much as you think you have to in that trade. I think, you know, I, I so you had to come up with a couple guys maybe, but I, I would really go in on that move because it's, it also sets you up for the future at the same time. Then you have Trey and AD there when LeBron's gone and you get right back underneath that second, that second apron and, you know, you make some moves and you can go back to the two-star model when it's all said and done. But that's what I would do. I would go in, I would, I, because I think that that move is the highest ceiling of all the moves you could make. If it works, it's a, it's a boom, right? It's a hit. You're going to potentially win an NBA championship. If it doesn't work, all right, it sucks. But what you're doing now may not work anyways. At least now, you know, that's that, that big three and you surround them with any kind of shooting with, you know, connect or you, you got, you know, we can keep Reeves maybe, right, uh, on the on stat, on the contract. But you can, you can, because we know uh, the Phoenix Suns, you know, pull out, pull money out of there behind to get keep great Grace and Allen with, with, with those guys over in, um, in Phoenix. And if you can keep uh, Austin Reeves and some other guys, you have a really formidable five, and you have to have some decent backups. And I think you can probably make that happen. So that's what I would do. I think the Lakers have a chance to compete for real if they had Trey Young. I'd go all in on Trey Young for sure. Greg, you started off one winner of free agency so far and i kind of think where i you know it might head up just so y'all know and for those that's watching we are right after this after he they choose their winners we are going to get into the conversation of who is actually the biggest threat to the celtics is it the nova knicks or the philly special we'll get into that but who do y'all feel are winners of free agency so far okay see i mean yeah. If you look at it, their biggest problem was toughness and rebounding, and they kind of figured out the toughness with Hardenstein and also the the Giddy trade, where you trade basically a swap for him and Caruso, an all defensive guard. So that team just added a lot of winning pieces to their roster. I think Hardenstein makes a big difference. You don't have to put too much pressure on Chet to guard bigger fives. You can have him kind of even like roam at the four now a little bit and because chet is a good defender it's just he's thin yeah he's re he's real thin so if you want to keep him healthy at the same <laughs> at the same time um this was a move that they had to make i mean it, it sucks that hartenstein left but i mean three years 87 mil i mean i'm not turning that down even if okc is terrible place to live um and then getting Caruso, you're swapping out Giddy, who kind of fell out of favor. He moved to the bench. He was already kind of on his way out. And then you add a, a really good defender, a smart player that every team was interested in at a point when, you know, the Chicago Bulls were clearly trying to sell. So put him in, put him next to Shea and Lou Dort and some of their other guys who really play defense. And that's a, a team that – you're adding really good pieces to the number one team in the West from last season. So I don't think they're that far off from, from winning. They got to get experience. This, this was good experience this season. Um, losing to the Mavericks. I'm sure that taught them some things and they'll, they'll take that and, and run with it. But uh, I think they're one of the big winners from, from free agency. Totally agree. I think OKC is a winner. Um, I think Philly's a winner. <laughs> Philly's a big winner. They went and got the perfect third star for their team, um, you know, to fit right in with Matt Maxi and Embiid. And, and they have a championship level window now. They have a championship level team. They have a championship level expect expectation now with that group. Um, and they would have told you that they had it before, but realistically now they do, right? They have a guy who can maximize the floor spacing. They everyone can shoot on that team, including Embiid. Uh, and beat attracts a lot of attention. Paul George has never played with a super a superstar that good before and, and that dominant before who attracts that much attention. So he's going to get a lot of open shots. He doesn't, he's not accustomed to getting, and he's going to have a, a, a career year as long as he stays healthy because there's going to be a lot of open shots for him. It's going to be really hard to guard that basketball team. Um, and they have a legitimate chance to win an, an NBA championship, which I am not a fan of. I don't, I don't want, I don't want anything good to happen in Philadelphia. Nothing. I, I can't stand them, but I think you have to be realistic about it, and they have a really good chance to win. And Tyrese is only getting better year by year. Tyrese is one of the best young players in basketball, one of the best players, period. Um, so when you when you mix that in, you have three all-pro three guys, three pro NBA, all-NBA guys on your team, you have a chance to go a really long way. 
Um, so I, I like what Philly did. I think it max. I think they maximized that window and they went all in, which is what I'm saying the Lakers should do. It's better to do that than to kind of be on the fence about it when you have a great player on your team. Um, and I just think they made the right. Maury, he 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 finds ways. He finds a way to get it done every time. He finds a way, man. There's a reason why he's been a GM in the NBA for so long and been a good one for the, in the NBA for so long. He finds ways to make his team really, really good and give them a real, realistic chance to win a championship. He understands what that means. Man, it's good because, you know, Embiid wants to win. So if they struck out on Paul George, I think you were seeing a conversation where Embiid might be out this year and next year. But – as y'all saw when he was, you know, giving him the heart eyes during the finals, I think Embiid is more than happy that PG is there. And to your point, you want the owner, you want the GM that's going to swing for the fences every time. Steve Ballmer tried to do that with the Kawhi, the PG combination, Harden. I think the Clippers, even with losing PG, you should have got something for them. They are one of the winners in this too because now you kind of get it's a better structure. I don't think that big three was going to work at all. You keep Kawhi, who's going to play about 62 games per year. You bring back Hart in, and then you add in even, I think, a sneaky, sneaky sign-in. I know he has his off-the-court issues, but Kevin Porter Jr., if his head is on straight, coming to the Clippers, I think it's going to be a – with Ty Lue as a coach, too, at that. He's not throwing no soup on Ty Lue. He's not doing no stuff like that. Ty Lue not having that. I think Ty Lue could get the best out of him. I don't see them winning a championship or nothing like that. But I think they're winners in this too. Instead of trying to actually force that big three again, just for the sake of, oh, we want to sell tickets. That wasn't going to work. Time to have a fresh start. 